Welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. We've got a great show in store for you. We're going to talk about some heavy history, and I love heavy history. I'm a heavy history hitter, and we're going to talk about some heavy history today. We were just talking about heavy history. We were talking about, about Rick Hover and the Navy and the and military the history <laughs> of the Cold War. We're fascinated by that, and we, we're going to actually go before that. We're going to tell you stories you never heard about the big one, World War II. And you might not know some of the things you're going to hear now, and I sure didn't know them until I met our guest, who really enlightened me and is working on a documentary, and we're sort of trying to get people out there to get the idea that this is a cool documentary idea and, and maybe even get in touch with us and want to do this documentary. So to my right, here he is, Alex Hi. Valentine. <laughs> Welcome to Let Them Talk. And um, so you are a documentary producer. Okay, uh, let me just talk about myself. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Paul, for having me here tonight. And um, first of all, I would consider myself more like an uh, investigative journalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, we started our company, Nestor Production, mm -hmm. uh, let's say about two years ago, as a bunch of uh, freelance um, paparazzo, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh -huh. <laughs> the guys who um, went all over the world, made some beautiful pictures, sometimes horrible pictures of wars and war zones, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. So, and then we come together and we think about the uh, stories mm -hmm. which probably every one of us has at that time. So, and I said, um, well, why not to recall how uh, started, for instance, even before the Cold War, Mm -hmm. even before the Second World War, how started the entire idea of uh, American military aid to the Soviet Union. And, uh, well, basically uh, the entire um, war machine of the Soviet Union was created um, with um, intensive help mm -hmm. of the West and specifically of the United States. And we tried to find out who was at the beginning of these stories sure. and how it happened exactly. So, and um, we were able to figure out that one of the beautiful and amazing uh, historical figures was um, John Walter Christie. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we are working on a project uh, which we named uh, Version Christie. Mm -hmm. which has nothing to do with the <laughs> Governor Christie. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Christie has right. nothing to do with him, right. okay. nothing political, but I would, love to, uh, uh -huh. I would love to make an interview with this guy. Okay. <laughs> because it's probably his relative, distant. Mm -hmm. he, well, he's from New Jersey, right? Yes, he was born in Hoboken, and, uh, in the round. Oh, uh, Hoboken. Yes, and okay. he spent his entire life in New Jersey working right. on his tanks. So mm -hmm. essentially, John Walter Christie was um, a genius. He was the same caliber of genius as Thomas Alva Edison, probably. Uh -huh. Because the guy created the um, entire modern mm -hmm. conception of tanks. First of all, it's a suspension, Christie, mm -hmm. which, are, uh, which is now used most widely all around the world, in every tank, almost every tank to this in day. the world. Right. these days. Then he created the idea of um, how to put all stuff together inside the tank. Mm -hmm. How to put transmission and the engine at the same place which eliminates mm -hmm. the need to transfer power all, all over the tank. It means the tank could be more compact. Etc, etc, etc. It's so very interesting. Okay, a ta let's now, we're, so we're talking about John Walter Christie, mm -hmm. okay, from New Jersey. Yeah, he, right. he was of Scottish, Irish, British descent. And he worked on a suspension system adapted for use in tanks exactly. prior to World War II. Much, much earlier than that. Right. He started these uh, works at the end of 20s. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. the 20th century. Now, let's just, as a matter of background, explain what is a tank, what's it used for, and why is it important, and briefly, just in a short time, what, what if it's for people who don't know it's what a, a tank briefly. is. It's very briefly. Yeah. It happened at the First World War that uh, when France uh, stabilized mm -hmm. and uh, they were um, practically impenetrable. Mm -hmm. There was no way to break through the fronts. And that's why the entire World War I mm -hmm. uh, was fought on the very same space, mm -hmm. the very limited space. Nobody moves back, forwards, whatsoever. So, and then generals mm -hmm. decided that they need a specific tool mm -hmm. to break through the line of defense mm -hmm. to support the infantry, which goes through this stuff, through this breakthrough. And that's how the entire conception of the tank, the original conception, was conceived. Mm -hmm. So it, the first tank happened in, uh, as far as I remember, 1916. Mm -hmm. And they were totally, unbelievably heavy Mm -hmm. or practically useless. <laughs> okay. So, the They're idea... The prototypes, basically. The prototypes, basically. Yeah. The idea uh, had to be developed in a way how to put, first, very powerful weapon inside this moving platform, and the second, how to protect mm -hmm. this moving platform and their crew. Right. Okay? And there was a third point, speed, how to make it fast. Mm -hmm. And every, these, uh, every one of these components sure. were used by John Walter Christie. Mm -hmm. He combined all of them. Mm -hmm. And he created the almost amazing ideal <laughs> tank for his time for the mid-20s. Okay, so now the, the real interesting point of this very interesting story mm -hmm. comes because here is a Irish-Scottish immigrant working in New Jersey, making des deciding that he's going to design the perfect tank. How did that design wind up in the Soviet Union, and what importance did it have when it wound up there? Oh, that's an amazing story. Basically, at that time, uh, the Russians had no diplomatic relations to the United States whatsoever. But since 1920, mm -hmm. they had uh, the trade company mm -hmm. named Amtork, which resides on uh, Broadway next to the city hall right now. Okay. I mean, Is it still there? No. Uh, the, just the they, they just yeah. liquidated this <laughs> company yeah, okay. and the mid-30s. Okay. Uh, and uh, they used this company as a, um, I would say, um, as a bridgehead mm -hmm. in the United States to collect, first of all, to collect the technical information, to collect very valuable information mm -hmm. about the progress in uh, science and techniques and whatsoever. Then it was the channel. Mm -hmm. the back channel to pay for Communist Party activity and for some um, election companies in New Jersey, for instance. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. Well, if the Mafia can do it, why can't uh, it's the Soviet It's not to do with the Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> military intelligence, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> actually. Oh, nothing to do with the Mafia. It okay. was the cover over the military intelligence, mm -hmm. over the Russian military sure. intelligence at that time. So in Today we would call this, uh, would we call this um, commercial espionage? I mean, sort of, because, um, yeah, I, I would name it commercial espionage. Mm -hmm. But at that time it was um, truly connected to the ideology, mm -hmm. to the uh, dissemination of uh, communism all around the I world, see. and the idea of communist, uh, communist international. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the third international, actually. Right. So they w it was here to, to uh, the main focus was to help the Communist Party USA. Exactly. But uh, the way to to please communists in Russia, that they bring back their some uh, inventions, some ideas. Uh, I see. Uh, some examples of the mm -hmm. good stuff. And that's how Amtork worked. Okay. And basically, um, 
they uh, in 1930, in the year 1930, in Russia they created the basic conception of military use of tanks. Okay. And then they started to shop around. Mm -hmm. What could be the basic model based on which they will create and develop the entire right. idea? So they went to Germany, they went to France, they went to United Kingdom. So Germany, they didn't have anything because of Versailles Treaty. Oh, the Versailles Treaty oh, forbade Versailles. We would say we call Versailles. Versailles, Versailles Treaty. Yeah. The Versailles Treaty uh, forbade Germany from building tanks or military yeah. equipment in any in any sense. All right. So um, then they came to to the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of conceptions, but not satisfying okay. enough. And finally, they came to Christie mm -hmm. here to New Jersey. Right. Now he didn't have a sign on the door saying uh, tank. Design and manufacture. Oh, not at all. <laughs> he <laughs> not was at all. he was doing something else with this. Of technology. course, he w he was um, he was doing many things. Mm -hmm. Basically, he started as a racing driver mm -hmm. in the beginning of uh, 20th century in 1909. Mm -hmm. He was the very first American who participated in um, Tour de France. Okay. So he knew motors and engines and absolutely motors. the motors, that. engines, and again the composition of the right. car, uh, which was revolutionary at that time. Uh, totally independent suspension, for instance, in a car. Okay. So, and then um, happened some uh, accident, and uh, I would say that the roads in New Jersey, uh, highways in New Jersey, were even worse than now. Yeah. <laughs> and he was. Um, badly hurt in an accident, and when he was at the hospital, he started to think about something else, no, not right. about the cars. So he thought about the uh, possibility to create uh, first the um, moving factor, the, the, the tractors mm -hmm. for moving uh, artillery, sure. for moving guns. Mm -hmm. And the second, he, th he told himself, Maybe I can use the same conception to build something together as okay. a block encapsulated. Sure. So, and that's how the idea of tank came. Mm -hmm. And he was pretty well known because when the Russian um, delegation came to came to the United States at the end of twenty uh, early twenties of the twentieth century, they knew where to find him. First, they came to uh, Cooper's Union College, where Christie, 20 years before, he used to study. Oh, I see. There. Oh, so he studied at Cooper. Yeah. He Interesting. He used to study John Walter Christie. Okay. So then, um, probably they were recommended directly to him. Mm -hmm. They stopped by. Uh, he showed them the um, uh, pilot models. Mm -hmm. And explain how they could be uh, sure. developed. Okay. Uh, at that time, the American Army tested all these tanks as well, and I have in my possession even uh, diaries and letters from uh, that time Major George Patton, who was in charge of the special uh, committee which tested all these tanks. Sure. And. He said, it's amazing, it's the best, it's, mm -hmm. it's the best what could be used for American Army. But unfortunately, John Walter Christie had a very bad character. <laughs> he was a character, I uh -huh. would say. So this guy is like, this is a great movie, right? So you're, you're thinking oh, absolutely. about this I'm, I'm, I'm th This should be presented as a movie about this colorful character. Exactly. Who, and, and so this is a fascinating story. And so we're at the point now where the Soviet Union, through their operatives in New York, have discovered this Cooper Union graduate who is making tanks in New Jersey. Uh-huh. And the tank has been tested by the U.S. Army Major George Patton, the famous exactly. tank commander later on in the, the Second World War, the future general, <laughs> said this is the best suspension and best tank idea that anybody's come up with. Yep. But we didn't, America didn't get that, right? They didn't get America that America didn't get it because they weren't able to understand the conception of the tanks. Only, 
only uh, pattern right. in the student at that time. Basically, a, a susp independent suspension sort of thing. Instead sort of. of yeah, sort yeah, of. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I brought the materials here. <laughs> I, yeah. I can show how it. <laughs> right, but it's fine. It we can discuss it because I think folks have seen it. The, the older tanks were very stiff. Like yes. tractors, yes. they just moved. But the newer tanks, and you can see them today. Every one of them, uh, they are wheels. Separately. Every the wheel wheels. within Every the wheel has a cylinder okay. with hydraulics inside. Hydraulics, yeah. Hydraulics inside and a spring inside. Okay. And it moves back and forth, right. and every wheel moves separately. Right, okay. And then that, that, that tank can go faster now. Faster, much faster. For instance, uh, the Christie uh, prototype. M uh, 1931 tank, uh, it has about 90 miles per hour. Wow, 1931. On a highway. <laughs> and considering when you see the old prototypes from World War One, they were like chugging away at one oh, mile, two miles an hour. Not hey, people could walk faster than them. So yeah. that was a quite a leap. But the United States rejected it. it United States rejected it. Why? It was they too revolutionary. They didn't yeah, understand it. Too revolutionary, and they didn't see the field, how to use it. Okay. There was no strategy ideas mm -hmm. for, okay. for to Americans go with it. to yeah. use it. So, so and the Christie sold two actual tanks to Russians. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay? And only because... From New Jersey. They were loaded, from New on, Jersey, a, loaded on a freighter and taken Exactly. To but the funny part is that because Russia and U uh, USSR at that time, they had no diplomatic relations with the United States. Mm -hmm. They had to buy these tanks as, as agricultural tractors. I've seen the documents myself, I mean, <laughs> in Aberdeen. <laughs> That's you know a the tractor. old story of when John Brown was taking uh, <laughs> rifles into uh, Kansas? Exactly. <laughs> they were labeled Bibles? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you know, That's, That's the very same story. <laughs> They're all rifle Bibles, right? <laughs> and I know, tractors. Who, <laughs> I know who signed it. Okay, <laughs> who signed document. it? Tell us, is that a secret or for the no. movie? I, I will keep it till the documentary comes out. All right, when the out. documentary comes out. <laughs> See, that's why we have to produce this documentary. Great idea for a documentary. Oh, right. absolutely. Alex Valentine, how can people, is there a place people can get in touch with you if they're really interested in, in, this, in this heavy history? Just go to my uh, to our website, nestorproductions.com. Nestorproductions.com. N-E-S-T-O-R. Uh, Nestor. E-R. N-E-S-T-O-R. T-O-R, right. Production. N right, production. Dot com. Production.com. Production. Nestorproduction.com. Yes, that's one word. N-E-S-T-O-R. And uh, their contact number, mm -hmm. and there is an email. Sure. You, you can just contact me. I, I would That's right on that web page, right? Yeah, this so is a web page. That right. There is some project we have. Great. That there are some uh, ideas we have. There is even, uh, we place there even short script. Right. So Nestorproduction.com. Good. Yes. All right, good. So, all right. So now we're at this. So the Soviet Union has grabbed two this idea. tractors, and the idea yeah, that comes with tractors. them. <laughs> the U.S. Army has re has rejected it, yes. and now the Nazi government of Germany gets into the picture. Oh yeah, Nazi government of Germany at that time they were not Nazis because it was 1930. Okay, Hitler was not in power, and Germans came almost at the same time to the United States asking for permission to wow. buy other variants of Christie tanks. Guess what? Permission was denied. <laughs> right, because they had relations with the U.S., so they had to go through the oh, channels. Oh, absolutely. Right? They had a diplomatic relation. They were able to go through official channels and they didn't succeed. <laughs> 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 they didn't even know the Russians were buying these other tanks. Uh, I'm, they uh, I'm afraid they did. Then why didn't they, they prevent did. it then? They just didn't get the idea that it was important. I have no idea. Uh, Until the Germans got involved, then they were worried. Basically, uh, basically, German probably think that they will be able to exchange these ideas with Russians uh, using other channels, not I through see. the United States. Uh -huh. But through so-called uh, back channels, the right. Rapolo. Oh, I see. They uh, they could purchase the idea from, from Russia, right? But they didn't do it. 
Wrong. Never oh, okay. happened. And the result is, so let's fast forward, 1941, enemy at the gates. Okay. The German army sweeps <laughs> across Ukraine and All Belarus right. and West and Western Russia, gets to the gates of Moscow, Leningrad, and the gates what of they Stalingrad. At the beginning. Guess what? They had about 3,000 tanks. Who had? They? Which side? Germans. Germans had 3,000. So they came in with a ma well, mighty tank force. Well, essentially 3,800, something like that. Mm -hmm. Russians at that time concentrated in 1941 mm -hmm. at their borders. The best tanks in the world, an amount of 23,000. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. Out of these 23,000, about 2,000 were the best of the best of the best. Okay. KV-1 and T-34. Okay. Very best tank in the world at that time, T-34. And that's based on? Based on Christie design. Right. <laughs> All others were as well. And perfect. the Germans had the infamous Panzer tanks. Those PZ first, okay. PZ uh, two, right. PZ three, and PZ four, right. which were <coughs> targets. Targets. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sitting. Very duck. good. We targets. say sitting ducks. <laughs> sitting duck. ducks. Sitting ducks. <laughs> right for the for the fat, much faster moving. Absolutely. And with a large gun. Absolutely. And very fast. So the the mighty German military, right, is coming across trying to defeat the Soviet Union, crush the Soviet dream yes. and ideal, and they meet Russian tanks that are built on the design provided by an American engineer exactly. named John Walter Christie and designed yes. in the United States in a factory in uh, New Jersey. And they were built on the factories uh, which were built and designed by American uh, companies, essentially in Russia. In, in the Russia. Soviet Union. And, uh, essentially, the entire Russian military production plants mm -hmm. were um, designed by American companies. Mm -hmm. They came and showed them how to do it. Exactly. Right. All the production. And at the end of the 20th century, uh, there are only two plants on the face of the earth where tanks are producing, uh, are produced um, on a conveyor. Mm -hmm. Every hour there All is right. a tank coming out of conveyor. Guess what? One of these plant is uh, in Nizhny Tagil in Ural Mountains and another is in Chelyabinsk. So both, both are in Russia. In Russia. <laughs> both are in Russia. <laughs> yes. So you're saying to this day under the Putin government Russia is churning out high-tech tanks based on the model of... Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right. And the conception is, of course, developed, widely developed. Yeah. But essentially, that's the very same design. Mm -hmm. yeah, now, what did the U.S. had? What did Patton drove his own tank? Uh, what was that? This, it was smaller and faster. Abrams. And a, no, the one back in World War II. They the did World War II was a Sherman. A Sherman tank, right? It's and amazing. <laughs> it's that amazing. was the, competi the American competitor to the T-34, the Russian tank, based yes, on the American but design. <laughs> but basically... But the American tank wasn't as good. Oh, no. Please, I, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> uh, technically, uh, they had... Uh, the famous Sherman tank. Five engines inside one compartment. Five engines. Five engines. Instead of one diesel of engine. One diesel. Five gasoline engines. Right. Nobody knew how to <laughs> how it will work together. Right. Uh, I have not enough imagination to imagine how to do it. Uh -huh. Now, so uh, what is that? What are tanks? Like, this is interesting. Now, so we got and uh, and also to bring out the point, I think it's important to notice that right now, what what is the most recent? Russian tank is the T T ninety T ninety, which is a design a direct That's the descendant, same line. The direct same descendant, line, right? Straight the same line, right. but of course it's it's extremely interesting tank that they had uh, stabilizers, they had uh, gyroscopes, they had a specific way to protect tanks mm -hmm. at all from anti tank right. rockets and right, right, more stuff high tech like technology in it. And it's amazing. Sloped armor and nice. all this kind of thing. Is a tank, I mean, in the nuclear world, really, or all these things, the aircraft carriers, tanks, all this stuff? They're, uh, they're basically, they're all basically uh, well, uh, make work. 
uh, technically, you know what, Paul? Um, in 1956, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, the famous Russian general, Marshal Zhukov, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Zhukov, who led Zhukov. the Soviet armies in World yes, War II. Yes. He tested the idea of breaking through the line of defense using tactical nuclear weapon. Mm. And he succeeded. In a in game in, in a, a game, I mean a, I mean in, in, a, in a testing ground of course. To use tactical nuclear weapons to blow a hole and then follow yes. through with tanks. And then and follow and using the tanks. Right. That's I hope that did. never happens. Oh, of course. That would be very destructive. Of course. <laughs> Alex Valentine, great interesting story. That's a fact I think we pretty much took told uh, so what let's think uh, can we talk about what it would be like in World War Two or any war to be in a tank what, what was that like what was a tank battle like for the crew inside the tank I mean were they like in the back in the background and in the, in the rear and somebody said attack and they just drove in the right direction shooting mm -hmm. all the way or what did they do essentially they um, there were different variants of tactics of tank tactics the first one were a serious heavy tanks Mm -hmm. which were um, which supposed to break through mm -hmm. line of defense sure. and destroy this line of defense. The second uh, variant were um, the second breed of tanks, I would say. Uh, they were used to support the infantry, mm -hmm. which had to be covered. Okay. That's middle tanks. And the third are very light tanks. They are mm -hmm. more like um, light nomads. Mm -hmm. at the time of Genghis Khan. Okay, moving fast. Moving very fast, okay. going through everything. Wow. One, and one minute to go. Uh, what is the life expectancy of a World War II tank operator in the heat of battle? Twelve minutes. <laughs> Twelve minutes. <laughs> yes. All right, so it was a suicide mission. Absolutely, but uh, somebody got luck. Right, and <laughs> it would be just a th w the one or two that survived at the end, of which side was the one they were yes. on? Yes, yes, yes. Right. But usually there were much more chances to survive inside the Soviet tank than inside the German. Okay, Alex Valentine, go to NestorProduction.com to learn more about John Walter Christie and how the United States built the great tank army of the Soviet Union, now of Russia, and how their tanks were better than ours, at least in World War II. Very interesting story, Alex Valentine. Heavy history here on Let Them Talk, and we'll see you next week. We'll have some entertainment next week. It'll be very nice. So thanks a lot for joining us, and thank you for thank joining us. Thank you very us. much, Paul. All right, good. Thank you.